Hey well guys, in this video I'm going to show you the exact process of how I laser mark these dog tags. They are pre-cut dog tags, this is not a video about how they are made, simply about how they are engraved. But I'm going to show you first how I engrave a single dog tag, as well as set up a jig to laser multiple dog tags at the same time. Make sure you stay tuned to the middle of the video where I'm actually going to give away my trade secrets on the exact laser settings that I use, as well as at the end to find out how three lucky viewers were able to win the three dog tags mentioned in this video. And I'm gonna be giving away a number of products in upcoming videos, so stay tuned to the end to find out how you can enter. Right, let's get into it. Right, so I already have a setup template that I use when producing these dog tags, but I'm just gonna back it up a little bit to show you how I'd do this if I was doing a one-off. So I use Coral Draw for my laser software, but you could use Adobe Illustrator, Lightburn, Inkspace, or something similar, depending on what you have. So first I'm going to open a new file and create a boundary box 49 millimeters by 29 millimeters. And I'm gonna orient that into the top corner, as this is the overall dimensions of the dog tags that we'll be engraving. Inside that box, I'm going to draw another box, this time 36 millimeters by 12 millimeters and place that in the center of the first box. This step is not all that necessary, but for illustration purposes, I just wanted to show you that this is the safe area of engraving due to the shape of the dog tag. From there, I'm going to type in the name of the dog I want to engrave along with the chosen font. For this example, I'm just going to do my dog's name, Harley, and I'm gonna use the font type Bebas Nuu. I think that's how you pronounce that. Now you can see I haven't gone right to the edge here. You can if you want, but with these bulkier fonts, I like to leave just a little wiggle room to achieve a nice balance. And that, my friends, is the setup complete. Let's move on to preparing the tag with some marking spray. So because we're using a CO2 laser and not a fibre laser, technically we're actually marking these tags, not engraving them, but you'll find that those terms are used pretty loosely and interchangeably in industry. So to mark our tags, what we actually need to use is a marking spray. Now there's a few brands out there, the two most popular ones are Surmark and Laserbond. Me specifically, I like to use Laserbond for no reason other than it's the cheapest for me to purchase. So let's have a look at how we apply that spray. To apply the marking spray, you want to do that as thinly as possible, but still obtain full coverage. The spray will go on wet and it will dry in a very short period of time, turning into a fine gray powder. And it's as simple as that. Once it's dry, we can move on over to the laser. So now that I'm at the laser, the first thing I'm gonna do is put down a sheet of paper and this will stop any scratches occurring on the back side of the tag. Then using a spare tag, I'm gonna set my focus height of the laser. I'm using an Epilog Helix laser here. It does have an autofocus option, but I prefer to adjust the focus manually on small items like this, just in case the plunger moves and gets caught in the honeycomb bed. As I've designed this tag to be lasered right up in the left-hand corner of the bed, I could just push the tag up into that corner and go right ahead with the lasering. But if my bed is not exactly calibrated, and if even slightly out, the name on the tag won't engrave directly in the center. So what I'm gonna do next is manually turn off my XY coordinates and use my laser's built-in laser pointer to find and align the laser head with the center of the tag. I'm gonna use this spare tag again and I've pre-marked the center and I can use that for the alignment. So I'm still gonna push the tag right up into that top left-hand corner, but I'm just gonna make sure that center is actually on the center using that laser pointer as a reference. And once it's set up, we just remove the setup tag and replace it with the tag we're actually going to engrave and then head back over to the computer to set up the print. And here is where I give away my trade secrets. After many months of trial and error, this is what I personally believe are the best settings to engrave stainless steel. So I'm using a color coded option here and the reason I did my boundary boxes in red was on purpose as I can use that color code setting to switch that process off so the red won't actually be engraved or cut whatsoever. When I laser my tags, I set my power to 100%, my speed to 40%, and the key here is to do two cycles. And the reason why I do this is that if there's any inconsistency in the thickness of the marking spray, the second pass will even that out. And as I mentioned briefly before, I'm going to use the center center graving option here in the advanced tab. And this will ensure that the name is as close to the center of that tag as possible. I'm using the Epilogue dashboard here, but your software should have a similar option. Once that's set up, we hit go. So this is obviously sped up a fair bit, but if you pay close attention to the second pass, you'll see how that laser really evens out the gradation in that font marking. Now, the important thing here is not to take the tag out too soon. 
Uh, these tags will cool down very quickly, but if you take them out too quick and wipe the marking spray, it will actually react with other areas of the tag that are still hot and it will leave a permanent smudge. So once the tag is cooled down, I'd give it say two or three minutes at the most, it can be removed for cleaning. You want to make sure you're wearing gloves and a respirator in a well ventilated area to remove the powder. And I simply wipe this powder off with a microfiber rag. With my tags, I offer reverse side engraving as a part of the process, but it's exactly the same as the front, only you're working with smaller fonts, so I won't bother showing that. But once both sides are done, I'll just give the tags an extra little polish to ensure the marking spray has been completely removed. And for a single tag, that's that. But if you want to keep watching, I'm just about to show you how to produce a jig so you can laser up multiple tags at the same time. And this can come in handy if you wanted to add dog tags to your engraving range as a consumer product. All right, so you may have seen a sneak peek of this file at the beginning of the video, but here it is again. Essentially what this is, is a preloaded template that I use with my business to engrave multiple dog tags at a time. This jig also has three preloaded fonts ready to go so when my customers choose a font from my advertised listing I can simply copy and paste their dog's name into this file now this template is the digital representation of a physical jig that I've already cut out with three millimeter acrylic and this is what it looks like here so instead of loading one dog tag at a time I can put the dog tags into this jig and do multiple so now I'm going to use the three winners of my Facebook competition to demonstrate how this jig works if you want to be a potential winner in some upcoming giveaways make sure you pop over to my Facebook page and give that a like and a follow as I'm going to be doing a few of these videos in future and giving away products in the process. So for this particular competition the names of those lucky dogs are Everest, Molly and Gus. So I'm just going to type those names in here quickly. Now when I did these as single tags I had to draw up the boundary box for the font but when I use this jig what I've done is I have pre-saved the maximum dimensions that will work in the file title itself. So you can see if I hover over here over the file name it'll tell me the size of the dog tag that I'm using and then the little indication where it says H12 and W36 at the end of the file name that tells me my maximum dimensions for the font so when I forget I can just hover over that title and remember what my constraints are so how many letters in each name will determine if the dog's name is will be restricted by its height or its width and I simply adjust that and then put it back in the center so the last thing I need to do before I send this to the laser is just select all the font and change the color so I can separate what I need to engrave from from the actual jig and then when I send it to the printer I turn the black lines off as that was just representative of the jig and then import my custom settings for the blue and I haven't got around to saving this yet but I'm changing that cycles to two and then sending it to the laser and for this process there's no need to go to the advanced tab and use the center center engraving option as I'm going to use the standard XY coordinates to position the jig and in a second I'll show you how I calibrate that jig to ensure that it's lasering accurately so what I have here are my three listed color options gold rose gold and silver and I'm going to use one of each of these samples for this demonstration so same process as before just going to give them a quick spray and wait till that powder dries and then I'm just going to load those tags into the jig when you buy these pre-cut tags, they do have a tolerance of about 0.5 millimeters. So sometimes you do need to adjust them a little bit. And I just do that with a little hook and pick set. So you may have noticed this little marking here on a bit of the leftover protective film. Essentially what that is, is a calibration mark. So every couple of weeks, instead of lasering a dog tag, what I'll do is laser a big grid onto the sheet of paper underneath the tag and check how accurate that center is in comparison to my jig. And then what I'll do is just adjust that line so it marks up to a reference point on my ruler and that's what I'll use to align my jig. Because on occasion when I'm cleaning the laser, I might bump those rulers and have to readjust them and it might not be the exact zero zero point again as it was when I created the jig. So you can see here, even though I speed this up right now, doing three tags at a time or more than three tags at a time is definitely gonna save you a bit of process time between loading individual tags. So if you're wanting to add a similar product to your catalog and business is good, one of these jigs will definitely come in handy. And that's it guys, we are done. That is a little bit behind the scenes of how I make these dog tags. Um, just one last bit of parting advice, if you're going to do something similar, when you offer in your listings font types, make sure you stick to those sample font types and don't allow for too many custom requests because you'll spend all day going back and forth uh, with potential customers and at the end of the day, uh, it won't end up being worth it. So if you are going to offer a custom font, make sure you charge that little bit extra for that option because I've been sucked into that trap before.
And again, thanks for the winners for entering the competition. It was just a simple share on Facebook to enter. And I really enjoyed making this video, so I'm gonna to continue to make some more of these videos to show you how I create other products. So if you'd like to be a winner of one of those and be featured in an upcoming video, please make sure you're following my Facebook page as that is where I'll be posting all the details of how to enter. So until the next video, I'll catch you next time.